Hello ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from the YouTube channel Red Lessons. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your support. Thank you for joining me once more. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the newest release by the company Yves Saint Laurent. And this one is called Why Eau de Parfum. So stay tuned. So this fragrance was released in 2018. The perfumer behind this composition is Dominique Ropion. Dominique Ropion obviously has done many other fragrances for the house of Yves Saint Laurent. He's worked on the original Lum, La Nuit de Lum, many of its flankers. He's done many fragrances for the house of Edition de Parfum Frederick Mall, including Portrait of a Lady, Promise, many, many, many other fragrances. And so that just scratches the surface of all the work that he's done. Incredibly talented perfumer. Now this one is an anticipated release, obviously, you know, why, the original why I should say came out back in 2017 and it's called why I'm sure for one reason stands for the Eve and Yves Saint Laurent, but also because of generation Y. So for those people who are born in the eighties and the nineties. So I guess that would be me because I was born in 1988. And so this is a scent that is meant to be sensual, seductive. It's supposed to resonate with those who are a little bit younger, but they also have, you know, they're uh, thoughtfully engaged into the nightlife, so to speak. And this one being the Eau de Parfum variant, it's said by a lot of people to be a bit stronger, to perform a little bit better, to last a little bit longer, to project a little bit louder, as is the case, I think, with most EDP fragrances. Projection, we'll talk a little bit about that. I don't think it's much louder than the original. Now, this one does have a slightly modified note breakdown. And so if you look at the original, it does have like aldehydes and ambergris. This one actually focuses on amberwood, ginger, juniper, cedar wood, apple, uh, some resin. So it's uh, definitely a different note breakdown. But I do think for a 2018 release, this is definitely one of the more accessible fragrances that were released this year. I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about it if I think it's among the best releases of this year and what I think of the overall smell. But let's just take a very quick look at the presentation. So the presentation for Y Sol Y Eau de Parfum is actually quite similar to the original, just has the Y and the YSL insignia here on the front. This is the only change. It says Eau de Parfum down at the bottom. At the very bottom, you see the serial number so you can authenticate your purchase. It's stamped into the box, UPC on the side, ingredients on the back you know, the typical stuff. In terms of the bottle itself, so it has this darkened appearance, it almost has this fade from opaque up here at the top to translucent down here at the bottom, YSL, it says Y on the side, which stands for Generation Y, and then on the bottom you have a sticker with your serial number printed on there in white ink, YSL engraved in the cap. The cap actually does click into place very securely, so you can pick this one up from the cap, no problems there. And in terms of the distribution on the atomizer, it's a little bit narrow, so try to spray from a distance. But let's go ahead and continue with the smell. Now, as soon as this fragrance opens up, yes, you will get a hearty dose of tonka bean. And tonka bean as an ingredient definitely drives and makes up the genetic DNA, so to speak, of a lot of fragrances on the designer side of the market. Whether you're looking at Versace Eros or Mano Busson Intense or any number of other fragrances that utilize the note of tonka bean, yes, it's there, it's loud and clear, it's apparent, but there are certainly little accent notes here and there, very much like a Christmas tree with the garland and the ornaments and so it's not like this is a pure tonka bean scent because then it would have just been driven by this vanillic undercurrent with a creamy odor profile but this one does have apple in there it has ginger it has cedar wood although when you're smelling it they're not clearly defined and so they're not outlined you don't see the silhouette even on an olfactory level it's not like you can say oh wow this smells like uh, cedar wood. There's a heavy dose of cedar wood. Oh wow, this smells like apple. I do think that there are fragrances out there that smell distinctly of apple. One of them, believe it or not, is an Avon scent that's called Signature. There's of course um, a Lacoste scent called Style and Play or Lacoste Red. So there are a lot of fragrances out there that do smell distinctly of apple. I don't think this is one of them. Now when you read the note breakdown, you smell it and you have that mental evocation, you can see why they would list apple as a note and you can, of course, make the connection on your own. 
But I think in terms of it being a dominant note in this scent, it's really just grounded and driven by the note of tonka bean. Tonka bean is an incredibly pleasant scent. Whether you're talking about something like Feb Delicious by Christian Dior, or uh, whether it be niche or designer, I think it's a very approachable note. You know, a lot of people say vanilla is an aphrodisiac, and so for it to have a vanillic overtone definitely says a lot in terms of its approachability and its likability, right? How many people are actually gonna buy into it? How many people are actually gonna like it? In terms of this scent though, um, I kind of like the fact that they modified the uh, you know DNA of the scent a little bit so that it's not entirely the same as the Eau de Toilette counterpart, but I like that it wasn't too much of a deviation that made it a completely different fragrance. I think this is a true flanker. Uh, this is what a flanker ought to be. The only thing that might confuse some consumers is, especially as is the case with a lot of older scents, traditionally speaking, especially when you think about like Terre d'Hermes. Terre d'Hermes by Hermes was among the first uh, fragrances, I think, on a commercial level that had an eau de toilette and a note of parfum counterpart. And then you could kind of pick and choose which one you wanted. But at the end of the day, as far as my nose can perceive, they smell exactly the same. What we've seen be the trend as of late is fragrances like Bleu de Chanel and Bleu de Chanel Parfum, Dior Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, Dior Sauvage, Eau de Parfum, they're actually changing the formula a little bit. So it's not just a money grab or a way for you to uh, purchase another variant, another concentration from a collector standpoint, but for also, you know, for you to experience something new. So it's a slightly different uh, note breakdown, slightly different olfactory profile, and I think it's quite nice. Now, from a personal standpoint, I feel great wearing this. I feel very confident wearing this. When I go out there in public, I know people are going to like it. I know it's going to resonate and it's going to bode well with other people. In terms of satisfying me on a personal level, no, really, I don't think this is uh, too unique. It definitely doesn't appeal to the aficionado or the connoisseur. It's not going to challenge your nose. It's not going to do any of that for you. But I think that on a personal level, if you're just looking for a Swiss army knife of a fragrance, if you're looking for a workhorse, if you're looking for something that's going to satisfy a bunch of different scenarios, something that you can wear dressed up, dressed down, a versatile all season, all occasion fragrance that is going to be popularly received by those around you, look no further, right? So this kind of falls in line with like uh, Dior Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel or uh, Mr. Burberry by Burberry. So it's in that family and perhaps it's a little bit on the sweeter side while it not totally becoming a gourmand with those ambery notes and the apple and the tonka bean and whatnot but i do think it's a very versatile uh, scent just not one that's going to appeal to the connoisseur or somebody who has a more refined palate so to speak but it's one that i would recommend in a heartbeat because i know people are going to enjoy it and i know it's going to work well on them let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall rating First up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell, and it's hard for me to say that this one is a unique scent. I truly don't believe that it is. I think it's a very pleasant scent. In terms of the overall smell, it's really hard for me to imagine that there's a human being out there that doesn't like the way that it smells, or somebody who would smell this in the air and say, oh, that smells gross. It's an incredibly pleasant scent. It's going to bode very well with a lot of people. I just think in terms of challenging you, in terms of doing things a little bit differently, no, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's not great groundbreaking. It's not earth shattering, but it's definitely a fragrance that's going to resonate with people because it is so mass appealing and commercially going to be accepted. Now, in terms of the longevity, it was pretty good, right? So that's something that's a given with a lot of Eau de Parfum variants of certain fragrances. I know another one was Dolce Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum. It did a lot better than its Eau de Toilette predecessor. Now for this one, I do think that maybe in terms of the increased performance, you're going to get like one or two hours. So it's not huge, right? So if you were getting six hours from the Eau de Toilette, you're going to get seven hours or eight hours from the Eau de Parfum, which to a lot of people might make a difference. And it might be the threshold governing whether they're going to purchase the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. Just keep in mind in terms of projection, this one is going to be a bit lighter. So the original had more of those like sea life aquatic elements about it. And so I think the presence of more volatile notes was a bit more abundant in the original. And so with the Eau de Toilette, it was a bit louder because those volatile notes are really what aid in the projection of the scent. Whereas this one is a bit more soft-spoken. It has a denser, richer, 
um, olfactory profile, but I think in terms of the projection, it's a bit more quiet. Uh, never radiated with beyond an arm's length as well. In terms of the versatility, you're looking at one of the most versatile fragrances on the market. If anything, if you're like in a really, really cold climate, I just wouldn't wear it in the winter, but anybody of any age, anybody of any sex can wear this one, even though this one is marketed towards men. Uh, so of course, this is a fragrance that you could expect to smell on a man, right? But these are just recommendations. So at the end of the day, if you like the way that it smells and you feel confident wearing it, then let that be the sole deciding factor for whether or not you decide to purchase it. In terms of the presentation, I do like the darkened appeal of the bottle. And if I were to give this one a final verdict, I don't love it and I don't dislike it, but I do like it. So it's right in the middle. So if I had to rank it, I would give it maybe like a three out of five. Where this fragrance really shines is in terms of its versatility. And I think if there's somebody out there who's been wearing uh, Dior Sauvage for the past couple of years, or maybe you've been wearing Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Gio, and you're looking to delve into something new, but you don't want something that's uh, being worn by a whole lot of people, I think this one is going to appeal to your personal taste. Now, if you're a connoisseur, if you're somebody that has experienced the most niche of niche fragrances, then obviously this is not going to tickle your nose buds. It's not something that's going to uh, pique your fancy or your whim. You're better off looking at some of the more obscure niche indie artisanal brands, but in terms of somebody who's just looking for a very functional fragrance, something that's going to get them compliments, something that the women love, something that's very approachable and accessible. Look no further. YSL's Y Eau de Parfum is the fragrance for you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I can't tell you how much it means to me. That was my review of Yves Saint Laurent's Y Eau de Parfum. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please, I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below. I would love to start a discussion. Also, if you are new to this channel, and only if you took something of value from this video, I would definitely appreciate your subscription. So please let me know by clicking the red subscribe button down below. I really appreciate that. And also this way, whenever you do subscribe and you enable that notification bell, when I do put out future fragrance related content, it's actually going to get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future reviews, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, or anything else fragrance related. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.